That is a chub. Look at that. And a fuel. Look at how big that is to that fish. Look at how big that that bait is. When you think about not using too big a bait, that is that almost here. half the length of a 20 inch fish. That is almost 10 inch chub right there. That's a beautiful fish. All right. I've been dreaming not in my head like I've seen it. A life worth living is a life with me. Okay, here we go. It's that time of year again. Ice off conditions at Strawberry Reservoir. This is the weekend to do it. It's Mother's Day weekend and the ice is coming off. So we're gonna give it a shot. See if we can get some big fish on camera for you. Uh, try a few different techniques. Maybe break out the fly rods. Not quite certain. It's a little breezy up here. Definitely still feels like winter and we got a little bit of rain in the forecast. But as long as the weather holds out, we're gonna see if we can put a few fish on camera. So stay tuned. Catching fish. Ice off conditions, <laughs> cutthroat trout, rainbow trout, strawberry reservoir. It's gonna be an awesome day. All right. Oh, well, Ian's already got a rainbow on, or caught and released already. First cast. I can't even make it down the hill. <laughs> oh, we got to get him all camered up. So we got perfect conditions for some slip float action too. So I'm gonna. See if we can get a fish pretty quick here on the jig. Nothing new here, same stuff. Black Marabou jigs. I like to use 12 pound test floral leaders. Another one. They hit it out there a ways. Ooh, there he is. <laughs> That's a good fish. At least he thinks he's good. go little rainbow not a bad little start man they fight pretty strong for that size <laughs> thought he was much bigger than that there he goes well Got it started. A weedy junk. There we go. Yep. One more weight to it. First little cutty. Oh, come on now. Come on now. Nice. First cut, hoping for some bigger ones than that, but yeah, he's a good start. Too. You can tell they've had a hard winter up here. They say fish will lose about 30% of their body weight over the winter. Isn't that crazy? Nuts. When you get ice off conditions like this, kind of breathing new life into the lake. And They're ready to they go on the feed? put the feed, feed bags on it for sure. Awesome. Good deal. I'm going to share this point with you for a minute. 
so there's a distinct drop off right on the outside edge of this other rock pile it's pretty shallow up there yeah like a big difference like to the tune of a 10 foot drop yeah or the hesitations got him yeah Might need the net for this one. I don't know. Yeah. Not too shabby. Oh, net's clear back there. I'm gonna all net him for you with my hands. I'm right here. Oh, and get some of that energy out. Come on, fish. Huh? Yeah. A little heavier. Yeah. Well, you got a real cool kind of a sheen, I like a blue green. Bonds, yeah. yeah. Blue green on his head. Gorgeous fish. Ian's using a little uh, black bucktail, if you can see that. Very similar. I'm using a black marabou. Hair jigs of any st whoop, any type. <laughs> Let's get him back in the water. He wants to get out of here. Hair jigs of any type. When you got cold water like this are just the money and that's that's really goes for almost any species i mean you see a lot of bass anglers use hair jigs cool water like this early season and a lot of uh walleye anglers as well i mean it's just a great choice all around yeah i really think they're gonna they'll push up in over that edge once you get that sun going a little bit so typically, you know, 10, 10, 30 is kind of that magic hour. At least what I've seen anyways for ice off conditions. And we were still dealing with like 38 to 40 degree water temperature right now. And these fish are a little sluggish. That sun gets the insect growth or insect hatches going, kind of kicks the, uh, the system into gear. Those fish respond. And it takes just a couple of degrees difference in temperature change and they fire up. Ooh, I think that was one. That might have been moss. That might have been that moss edge. Yep. Yeah, I've got moss. Yep, see, it's just the edges. Yeah, I think is a lot of it. Fish like edges anywhere there's an edge. If you notice, we're keeping the rod tips pretty high, and that's very common when you're jig fishing to do that uh, for a couple of reasons. For one, uh, the fish that pick this jig up are really just sitting on it. They're not, they're not really slamming it, and, and you're not moving that bait fast enough for them to really feel a reaction on those fish when they hit the bait. And the second reason is the orientation of the jig. We're fishing anywhere from 60 to 90 degree angle jig eyes, uh, hook eyes on this, and you want to keep that hook point facing up. So keeping that, uh, you get one? Weeds, yep. <laughs> yeah, keeping that uh, hook up, or that uh, rod up, will actually uh, give you some advantages there without uh, snagging up and you don't have the hook point dropping down on the rocks. <laughs> Sorry, I lost my train of thought there for a second. Looked like Ian had a fish for a minute. <laughs> Hopefully that came through. You don't have to reel so much if you want, if you can get the yeah just kind of swimming it there he is yep just like that see and fish respond to it those hesitations in the water make it look as natural as anything living he's got some uh spinning going on i think he's a cut i think just the way he's fighting And that, that fish was again right there, coming off the bottom close to the weed line. A little smaller than the ones we've been catching. Still uh, just beautiful fish. I mean, this one's got spots all the way down around his belly too. Clear down. 
You don't see many like that. All right, and he's already ready to go. It's just, you get so excited for this. We've got our gear about 50 yards away from us. Just pretty much make it down here as fast as you can, dump everything you've got, <laughs> run to the edge of the water. Exactly. Reminds me when I was like eight years old, you know. <laughs> Not a lot of things change. Yeah, yeah. The excitement. But then you have to walk the 50 yards back to get your gear. <laughs> he was uh, about 30, 40 feet out. Yeah, so he was kind of in that belly out there. Yeah, this little bit of breeze we got, we got like a six mile an hour wind right now, is just screaming slip floats. I may have to get get a rod out. Yeah. Have to manage, you know, both. Yeah. A lot of people hitting this lake today. Say they did some announcements on social media here yesterday and well even a couple of days ago saying it it's going to be on and they weren't kidding it's it's on in fact uh oh yeah they must have really got some wind here last night because this whole side of the lake i mean dang near put a boat on it but you go over to the main body of the lake and you probably still have 30 inches of ice out there floating around there we go right here close Right on top of the weeds. Yeah. I imagine there's some waves. There's a chance that they were way up in there overnight. And they're starting to kind of pull out of that bay too. No. Oh, that's a bigger fish. There we go. There are some absolute giant fish in this lake. I hope we find them. So that fish is pushing 17. I don't feel quite go 18. Hey, it's close enough to a double. <laughs> Let's get him back. And they're all just ready to go. Got some good weight. Oh, oh yeah, Ooh. yeah. That's on the fish of the day so far. It's on the better side of things, isn't it? Got our first twenty incher. Come on. This lake will produce an absolute giant cutthroat. I mean, hey. you can get fish up to the fifteen pound mark in here. Maybe bigger. Sorry. Trying to handle them pretty well here. Really good. That's a that's a two hander there. There we go. That is a nice fish. fish. Let's see if we can get a close up of this without tangling in your line. Look at that fish. Look at look at the tail sticking out of its mouth. You see that? Yeah. <laughs> Let's, see if I can get the... Let's see what that is. What is here. that? Oh gosh. I'll let you know in a second. That fish is. He's choking on something. Pretty look at that. Sized... Look at that. Pretty good sized fish. I That's can't... a chub. Is it chub? Look at how big that chub is. Look at that. Hold that up next to that fish. And this, it ate my bait. <laughs> and it ate his bait still. This fish, that chub right there, that is a chub. Look at that. And a fuel. Look at how big that is to that fish. Look at how big that, that bait is. When you think about not using too big a bait. That is that almost bait. half the length of a 20 inch fish. That is almost 10 inch chub right there. That's a beautiful fish. All right. Yeah. And he still took the marabou jig. <laughs> Look at that. Crazy stuff. Yeah, that is. The fish are just gorging themselves. Get a few more of those, huh? Yeah. Slot buster. <laughs> yeah. You know what they call slot busters in this lake. So they have a regulation. You can keep two fish, two cutthroat, under 15 inches and one over 22. Everything between 15 and 22 
has to be immediately released. And so everybody out here that likes to keep fish, they're in search of that slot buster. They want that bigger fish. And personally, I think the smaller fish are actually better to eat, but you don't see a lot of anglers keeping those fish smaller than 15 inches out here. But nonetheless, a uh, target for a trophy is to beat that slot buster size, that 22 inch size. And these fish really put on the shoulders once you hit that. <laughs> get into a 23, 24 inch cutthroat, it is, it's gonna let you know how big it is. <laughs> it seems like these hesitations on the jig are really what getting these fish going. Just kind of letting that, yeah. Uh-huh. Yeah, just letting it kind of sit out there, kind of hover. Uh-huh. For sure, yep. Yeah, good high modulus graphite. Really kind of almost necessary to feel what these fish are doing. Power-wise, I mean, you can get away with light action or ultralights. A lot of people like to fish the ultralights out here. I personally prefer medium light to medium. And I, I get my action, I get that feel off the rod by going to length, too. I mean, uh, six and a half, seven foot rod category is kind of the perfect kind of action overall I think and, and, and feel overall and power overall that you get when you're fighting these fish and trying to feel these strikes mm -hmm. well um, I actually just brought a travel rod I had I didn't actually bring my slip float rod so I'm gonna play around again with a seven foot medium powered rod for slip floating I think Ian's got his nine footer right yeah uh-huh that nine foot rod is really ideal for slip floating because really gives you line control uh, when you're trying to fight the fish at distance and a lot of slip floating especially out here Ooh, that fish took off with it <laughs> yeah <laughs> you're you're hooking fish way out there man that fish has piled that how did i miss that one you sure rip the drag out <laughs> i know it like changed <laughs> yeah slip floating you're often hooking fish way out there and a nine foot rod will allow you to pick up that line for the hook set a lot easier than a, a shorter rod will plus any rod you get the action of the rod and the feel of the rod is really dictated by the length of the rod and the taper over that length so the longer the pole you get the inherently softer the tip sections on those rods are going to be Whoop, there he is didn't even reel and he kind of sat on that that's almost feeling like a little scrappy rainbow i think he is <laughs> Yeah, that or he's a really small little cut. I think he's a rainbow though. Let's see what we got. Little rainbow, little tiny rainbow. See, uh, give you a perspective. That is a 12 inch fish. That is almost as big as what was in that other trout's mouth. I mean, down his throat. That's bait, yeah. <laughs> so you see these, uh, these big glide baits that are out there that our anglers are using, you know, and the big trend you know, sweeping across the country is use these great big glide baits for largemouth. Man, try them for trout. <laughs> Who knows, right? <laughs> All right, okay, we're gonna hook up a slip float and see if we can't pick up some fish on this technique. Slip floats can be absolutely amazing tactic. <laughs> pick up fish when uh, you got a little bit of wind to work with and uh, the fish are working in uh, patterns like they are with this wind so I'm gonna give it a shot and see if we can't pick one up okay so basically I'm using a cigar float this one's a weighted float um, I think it's uh, made by little Joe I think is the name of the company I'll put the link in the description so you guys can see what this one this one is and I like these slender cigar floats because of the surface area now it looks like a big float for you know the category of fish that we are catching but the idea with a slender float like this is that the diameter allows this float to have a very low surface area in the water so um, when it's sitting there and it's bobbing around and that fish pulls on it it has to exert less energy to actually pull the float under the surface meaning that the fish doesn't feel as much tension on the line 
thus you don't get fish that react to that and spit it out um, and you end up missing the fish. So, I don't know if you may have seen that with a bluegill, a lot of times uh, you get out there with a red and white bobber and it's a great tactic for bluegill, but you miss a lot of fish because you see the fish pull that float under the surface and you immediately set the hook, fish gets the bait, but you never hook the fish. And that's a lot of cases that, that those fish are unable to break the surface tension and what you're seeing is that float pulling the bait back out of the fish's mouth because of the surface area of that float. So slender floats, great option. And what we do with this is I got some bobber stops. These are a threaded uh, thread bobber stop. You can use the rubber bobber stops if you prefer. I like the thread. I think it goes through the guides a little bit easier. And a lot of these kits, they'll come pre-tied um, on a little tube like this, so it makes it easy to apply. And you end up with a little package of beads as well. And you need these beads because you don't want that knot to go through the opening on that float. So you need to have the bead to close that opening up a little bit, um, give that kind of an extra stopper on that knot and uh, prevent that from going through the float. And this allows you to set your depth um, really just about any way you want to. I mean, I fished slip floats as deep as 20 or 30 feet at times. And you have some disadvantages with that depth, but hey, you have the option to do it if you need to. If that's where the fish are biting, then go for it. So let's grab our line. I'll try to do this in the wind. And the wind is picking up a little bit here. So hopefully it doesn't get too unmanageable for this technique. Ideally, you want to have somewhere around, you know, four to six mile an hour wind is, is usually perfect. A little bit of chop on the water, not much. You want to be able to see your float. You want to have that drift and you want that uh, kind of giving it action. Uh, it's going to bob that uh, jig in your presentation up and down in the water. Now you can use a lot of different jigs with this if you want to go completely artificial with a small plastic on it. We could put the hair jigs on here if you wanted to. And it worked, worked just fine. Okay, so that little tube, I don't know if you saw that, I didn't describe it, but that little tube I just threaded up onto my line. And then I took the knot off of that tube, make sure it's straight, and then kind of cinch it down over my over my line now i'm not going to cut this one right away but i get it nice and tight but i'm going to cut these tag ends off here in a second uh to oh, maybe three eighths of an inch long or so some people leave these big tags on them so it gives them a little bit extra cider out there but where we're casting some long distances i don't want to have all that extra thread uh, interfering with the cast okay now i put that just really anywhere on that line because uh, we're going to adjust it then the next step is to put on that bead. Get that bead up there. Then we thread on our float. Now the jig that I'm using that I've chose is just a little uh, tungsten ice jig. Um, it's a great counterweight to actually pull the line through the float, especially if we end up uh, fishing some deeper depths and have to go to oh, 10 or 15 feet or, or more down there. So. I think right now seven feet's probably gonna be our, our go-to on it. it. Should be perfect for it. But a little tungsten jig. Now, you can see the eyelet on this tungsten jig is really quite small. And it has a tendency to actually get caught up inside of this style of a float. So I'm gonna put another bead on. Thread that on here like so. These are just small beads that come in that package and then tie on my jig. You can use about any knot you want to. Being a little small ice jig like this, a regular clinch knot is gonna be the best. If it was a bigger jig, you could probably get away with a polymer knot or you know, where you double the line up through the eyelet, but these are pretty small eyelets. So basic improved cinch knot or clinch knot. Get that down there. Cut our tag end off and we got our rig. Now, let's go ahead and cut the thread off on this a little bit. Get that down to, say, about three-eighths of an inch or so <laughs> while we fight the wind to do this. Get my knife out here. About right there is good. I leave a little bit on it. It'll go right down to the knot. You could definitely go right down to the knot if you wanted to, but this uh, little bit of tag kind of gives us something to grab onto when we want to adjust that knot, makes it easier to slide it up and down the line. Put those pieces of thread in my pocket here. Okay, 
All right, now, like I said, we're gonna probably set about seven feet. I mean, looking at where this drop off is, and I use the jig. If you've watched some of our previous videos, I have a, a nice off video from last year talking about using the jig to actually determine how deep the water is and where those drop offs are. So that when you go to a slip float, you already know how far to adjust that. Now you can see how easy that was. I don't know if you caught part of that <laughs> moving kind of fast here because it's a little chilly and a little windy and I want to catch some fish, but you can grab hold of that knot and easily slide it up and down that line. I mean, very, very slick and it acts as a stopper. Now the neat thing about that knot is you can actually reel that knot all the way through your guides and it doesn't interfere with casting at all. You can reel it right up into the reel if you want to. And your float slides all the way down to the jig and you can see how that little bead's helping us out with that jig. It allows you to cast. I mean, you can, you can hold the length of line off the tip of your pole to your float six, eight inches off the tip of the rod so you can cast it just like you were casting the jig and it uh, gives you a perfect control, which means technically you can use any length of rod you want to. You can fish any depth you want to with a slip float and keep a controlled depth where that jig is presented anywhere you want to in the water column. So we're gonna try to drift about mid column. Yeah, we're thinking it's about 14, 15 feet of water out there, seven foot dropper, kind of cover the middle of the water column, see how the fish are reacting to it. I really think the fish are gonna come up a little bit higher in the column as we get this water temp to warm up a little bit. So, and the wind should just help us as we get further in the day. So let's go catch some fish, a little piece of night crawler. We're good to go. Okay, so for this one, I say really a longer pole is nice to have because you can really manage that line a lot better. Ian's fishing that nine foot rod, but I grabbed a travel rod. I grabbed one of my seven foot mediums and it will work just fine for me. And I did grab a line count or a live liner reel or a bait feeder reel as they call it that has a secondary clutch on the back. So what happens is I can sit the rod down, engage my clutch, adjust my tension for current or whatever on this back knob here and the fish can pull line out as they need to without feeling any tension. So if I don't make it over to the rod fast enough, because I'm still gonna fish the jig as well, I don't end up losing a rod in the drink. <laughs> so um, then as soon as you retrieve, it disengages that clutch, engages the primary drag, you set the hook and you're good to go. All right, let's get her done. Oh, there you are, there you are. Get ready, come on fish. He's on it. Nice. There we go. <laughs> on the slip float. They're so pretty, aren't they? Finally got one on the slip float. Sure it's recording. Awesome. <laughs> Step in a hole, go under the water. That fish, that's a solid fish. Look at that. Oh, <laughs> managing cameras, trying to get some underwater on this fish too. Just beautiful. That was gorgeous. Stout too. Stout, look at that. Look at the colors on that fish. Beautiful fish. Now there's not a slot limit on rainbows in this lake, yeah, so if we wanted to keep him. Really like to get into these guys. Yeah. There he is. Yeah. Oh, popped off. He was doing that same thing that that one was doing with yours. Just started swimming away with it. Yep. Didn't pull it under. 
stayed at that depth, just kind of, yeah, just kind of started swimming away with it. There he is. Oh, come on, that was a good takedown. Yeah. Not very big. But he is a fish. That was a good little bobber down though. That was that was pretty sweet. Maybe 13. Oh, come on, fish. Yeah, we could if you want to. See if we can get this in in between gusts of wind. We've kind of been battling that all day. It's uh, not a bad thing, but when it gusts really high, yeah. it did seem to kind of shut the fish down a little bit. Mm -hmm. Kind of rotating, swirling winds too, so it was changing directions on us a few times. Uh, might have also kind of confused them as to where their food's kind of coming from and everything. Yeah. So it's a little current, current disorientation. Yeah, that's yeah. what I call it. So, but a pretty pretty good day. Pretty good day. Yeah. Pretty solid day. I mean. Uh, no complaints. I mean, it's strawberry ice off. I mean, it is what it is. I mean, uh, the, almost the known universe in this area, anyways. It's it's kind of a, almost a holiday. It almost just feels like like spring strawberries. Yeah. Where we're at, the ice sheet's actually so far away. Yeah, it's a lot almost, of times that, that ice almost completely gone. Yeah, over on this here. side. But, uh, so I mean, by the time we get this video out, which is going to be pretty quick. I mean, hopefully we should have this video out within the week. Mm -hmm. You're probably going to be completely open water out here. I mean, I it guess, is going to yeah. be fast. It is, it is moving, um, but the water temps stay cold. The fish are hungry. They're moving in shallow. So even with that ice cap gone, it's going to be pretty good fishing for a while. So yeah, and you'll have the main body of the lake where it was still largely iced up. You know, for yeah. at least the next like probably a week, give maybe, or take. maybe, maybe. Yeah. <laughs> I guess if we get it's really going big winds too, yeah. smashes it on the edges and breaks it up, it might be quicker. It's not not an exact science for sure, but yeah, yeah. Anyway. yeah. Good day, no complaints here. Jig fishing, got some slip float action in there too. I mean, um, yeah, I get out there and give it a shot, that's all I can say. I mean, there's gonna be a lot of lakes like these coming up here, uh, higher elevation lakes that the ice is gonna be breaking apart. Uh, it's that time of year. Hey, there's, there's our gust. Some of that wind. Try not to lose our hats about. while we're doing this, right? So, if you like our videos, uh, subscribe to us on YouTube, like us on Facebook, like us on Instagram, and as always, tight lines. I've been dreaming on in my head like I've seen it A life worth living is a life with meaning I'll do what I love till my heart stops beating I'm feeding this demon